If you've been following the live, this is another Winning Women live takeover. So this is going to be a great time where we'll have great conversation with two phenomenal women of God. Um, but before I bring on um, our first guest for this evening, just to give a bit of a, a, beef, a, 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 a brief, a beef, I'm clearly hungry, a brief background or a quick synopsis um, about the Winning Women's Ministry. So the, winning, the KICC Winning Women Ministry, a tongue tie, is for every woman aged 16 and above and is a spiritual home to thousands of women in the UK and worldwide. The ministry is headed up by Pastor Yemisi Ashimaloo, who is the resident pastor and the global head of the Winning Women's Ministry. So a massive shout out to Pastor Yemisi. So this has been established since 1998. So we are in year 26 of the Winning Women's Convention, and it's been empowering women to embrace their identity um, in Christ and become the best that God has ordained them to be. The heartbeat of the ministry is to... Um, enable women to develop their faith in Jesus Christ, encourage them to have more confidence in who they are and who and what they can and what they can achieve. Um, not forgetting to kind of really facilitate the intergenerational relationship and collaboration in order to preserve the vision and legacy of winning women. So it's definitely a very dynamic ministry that really wants to cater to women in all stages and all ages of life. There is something that could be of great value and of great use um, to, to you. So we are looking forward. We have two phenomenal women. I can say, okay, from sunny Romford. All right. I'm not sure the sun must have missed where I am, <laughs> but I'm sure <laughs> I'm glad for you, Teresa, you had some sun um, in Romford. If you know anything about the UK, it, the seasons love to unite and definitely love to do do their own thing. So before I bring on my first guest, who I believe has already um, put in the request, so that's great. I'm just going to like preposition. So we have the amazing Pastor Helen Yorson, who will be joining me this evening. So Pastor Helen, um, alongside Pastor Andy Yorson, they both co-pastor and lead KICC Ghana. But Pastor Helen, in her outside of being also of being a pastor, she also has an amazing um, career as a phenomenal worship leader. Um, pastor Helen is an award-winning singer with multi and has done multiple projects to her name. She has a deep passion. Um, in uh, sorry, has a deep passion in deepening the relationship with God through music as she performs. So an amazing woman of God who has been a part of the ministry for so many years. So I'm going to bring Pastor Helen on. And let us indeed kick off the first of our conversations for this evening. So as it all loads, you know, the gift that is IG, I can see. Movement. Oh. Hi, hey. Helen. Hey, oh, hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'm doing well, thank you. I'm doing very well. Oh, it's and yourself? Have you? No, I'm well. I'm well. Really looking forward to conversing with you this evening. Thank you so much for joining. Um, you know, on behalf of Pastor Yemisi, I welcome you. So, I mean, how was it in Ghana? How is how 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 was things on that side? Well, it's great. It's sunny. I mean, I can say it's sunny. <laughs> it's, well, it's not yeah. sunny now. It's, it's evening, so it's but it's it's, a, it's it's nice and warm. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It. You're definitely on the right part of the world when it comes to like having the best temperature. So I can see much love is being shown. <laughs> much love is being shown to you <laughs> in the oh, chat. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, who's that? Is that Elaine? That's true. That's true. Oh, I definitely hi, love Pastor Helen, yeah. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Hey, Shola, what's up? How are you? <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, fantastic. fantastic. So, awesome. so we're going to just kick off. Yeah, so great to have you on, Pastor Helen. So thank you thank again. You. And before we kind of have a little brief, you know, um, conversation, just do a quick fire round. So nothing too, you know, heavy, just kind of, one or the other, just to kind of get a little bit of the woman behind the ministry. So okay. are you a morning dove or a night owl? Night. Night owl. Has that always been your rhythm? Um, I think I, I, I don't know. I think I kind of work better at night. Know, for some reason, at night. Some okay, reason. no worries. Okay, night owl. 
Hills or flats? Well, at the moment, flats. Yeah. Is it more about comfort, practicality? Comfort. Yeah. Practical. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, that's, that's, that's a good one. When it comes to vacations, is it, do you prefer a beach holiday relaxing or you adore the explorer? I'm not the explorer. No, no, I'm um, not. No, I'm not the explorer. That's it's, it's too much work. Normally, I'm dragged. I will. I will explore if I'm dragged along. But um, if I was going to book a holiday on my own, no, I'll be in my hotel room, sleeping. Yeah, <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes you need that, and I think especially you know with all the demands that you have, you just need a kind of like vacation where you do absolutely nothing and just kind of recenter and reset with yourself so yeah i'm yeah. with you with that I, I like a bit of a balance i don't like to go too hardcore yeah but then you feel like you need a holiday from the holiday i know right <laughs> <laughs> okay fantastic so i just wanted to kick off with um, our first question for this evening so many people know you as an incredible award-winning worship leader and i've had the you know opportunity to hear you live and it is indeed a pleasure to the ears um, oh, I must. Be, I'm, I, I nearly forgot to say that. I know when it comes to your vocals, you're like the vocal concordance. Is that is that true? You are oh, quite Jesus. the heavyweight <laughs> reference. <laughs> I've heard that well, being said about you before. <laughs> you know, so, well, what should I say? Well, I, I try my best. I I, I think I, that was my my producer who who gave me that label, and he's he started calling me the vocal concordance, and everybody's. Uh, well, thank I'm you, Jesus. Sure. Not Amen. <laughs> Well, we, we, we thank you. It's a pleasure to, we don't enjoy you. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> there he is, let's not get in trouble. So, um, obviously, you're an amazing award-winning worship leader, and there's so much that you do, not only as pastor's wife and pastoring and leading the winning, winning ministry in Ghana. Does yes. the role into, you know, do they inter you know, interweave, or do you find one aspect of the ministry more demanding of your time? You mean um, when it comes to the women's ministry and church? Or? Yeah, and part, yeah, in terms of the balancing of both. I, I think, as you said, I think it's it's intertwined because obviously the women are from they're from um, KICC, obviously. So um, and we work together. Yes, obviously, yes. My I, I'm doing my pastoring and I'm running the women women's uh, ministry as well. So it it is intertwined and we work together. I work together with a group of um, women. So obviously, I don't do the work all by myself. I work together with a group of very strong women who are very good with organizing, planning, coming up with ideas or what we need to do. So that helps a lot. So it's not just on me. So that really helps me a lot. Yes. Yeah, no, that's I mean, that's fantastic that you have like a, a group of a team that in a, a team of women that are kind of working with you. It kind of like leads me to my, you know, to my next question that, you know, oftentimes there can be a disconnect between the women like you know between generations and i guess like where you've got a breadth of women from all stages and ages of you know in life what's your what's your take on terms of how we can better bridge the gap sorry bridge the gap between the generations <laughs> yeah. i think uh, i think involvement i think involvement is important so that i mean there's some things i remember there was one event that we did we did uh, it was a visit to uh i think it was like a a juvenile home so when we did it we actually got we actually got our young adults so we got them to front it even though it was a winning woman's it was a winning woman's um, mm. um event we got them to front it rather than us that, that rather than the older women so i think it's involving people involving the younger generation when we don't involve them they don't really know what's happening or what we do so i think it's important to um involve them in what we're doing and and get them involved in some of the planning sometimes i involve them in some of the planning ask for their ideas and all that so i think that's important that's i think that's how i found it it's worked better that when you involve them and not just tell them do they they're just um give instructions but tell uh, this is what i this is what we want to do can you organize it? Can you yeah. can you go ahead and plan it? Yeah, yeah. And I can imagine. Yeah, I can, I can imagine it, it kind of sets also a sense that they feel responsible for something, yeah. and also kind of yeah. like you know feeling valued and a part and a part of that. So the, I've heard some amazing things about the initiatives that you you're leading in Ghana. I know you're being quite modest and not probably I feel that you had a thriving young adults ministry, and I guess they are probably really a part of the heartbeat of, again, what you're doing with the women's ministry. So, 
I mean, I think, yeah, I really appreciate you saying like involving and bringing them together has definitely, yes. you know, been a, a contributing factor. So as in like, I know we often are, you know, no pressure. I know we often have the gift of your presence when you do come for the, you know, for the convention. But how the women in KICC gone gearing up for the global convention? So, I mean, we've already had questions about, okay, so where, um, um, is it going to be on YouTube? Is it gonna, where is it going to be showing online? Since we're not going to be there physically, where can we watch it? Some people want, I, I know one particular um, branch actually said, well, uh, maybe we might even come together in our actual branch and all watch it together. Oh, so people to. are... Yeah, so some people are, I think, they, I think they actually did that the previous year, actually. One of the branches, they actually came together and watched it together as a group of women. So I think, um, so everybody's kind of gearing up differently. Some people are going to watch it individually. And then and we are share, obviously sharing the links every time that once we get the link, share it with everybody so they can all watch. So I think um, we've been sharing, obviously, the, the artwork on our pages. Uh, with the pastor's wives and then also now we, uh, we have a winning women's page we'll be sharing it on that page as well so yeah so i think uh yeah we're, we're all things are ready understand what's happening yes yeah we're ready. <laughs> ready. oh no that's fantastic no that sounds so so amazing and um Thank you as always. You are indeed a blessing to I've always enjoyed your ministry and it's been great being able to converse with you this evening. So thank you again. Thank you again for your time. And um, yeah, I'll now leave you to or to continue with the conversations, but I'll release you to go for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thanks so much. God bless God you. God bless you. Thank you. Great. All right, everybody. So again, that was the amazing Pastor Helen Yorson joining from all the way from KICC Ghana. So, um, hey, they're getting ready in Ghana. We in the UK, we ought to do the same. So again, I can see so many of you have joined. So thank you again for joining. Um, I'm Yawa, your host for this evening. And I believe our second guest is ready to be also, is also in the room to be joining us. So just before I bring her on, just to give a brief summary. So you might already know that we've got Dr. Michelle McKenney Hammond, sorry, well, that will be joining us um, this evening. So she's a best selling author of over 42 books, selling over 2 million copies worldwide. She's one of the most published Black female authors in the inspirational space. Um, Dr. Michelle McKinney Hammond is a, po is a popular international speaker, a relationship expert, a life coach, and has spoken on major, major platforms. And um, be it from Potter's House, I was recently there, and um, to, Christ, to, to Crystal Cathedral. So she's definitely a phenomenal woman of God who's multifaceted. So let me just go ahead and bring in Dr. Michelle. And we'll just get ready to. to... <laughs> this is something. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, I can see you now. How okay. are you? Is everything good on your side? I pray in Jesus' oh. name. <laughs> okay, amen. <laughs> well, it's great to have you, Dr. Michelle, on behalf Thank of you. Pastor Yemis Ashimaloa. Thank you so much for joining us um, this evening. So um, just really, really, really glad to have you. How are you doing? You know, except the Wi-Fi, you know, <laughs> how, how are you keeping today? Great. There's a lot going on and it's all good. So I'm excited about life, about God, about everything. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Sounds like all the right things to be excited about. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just do some fire round questions. No, okay. Nothing too heavy, just to get a little sense of the woman behind the ministry. So answer how, how, best, how best you feel. So are you a morning dove or a night owl? I'm a night owl, definitely. Ooh. Okay, night owl. I am night not owl. morning at all. Oh, really? <laughs> Has that always been your rhythm? <laughs> mm, I have to work at morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, are you heels or flats? Definitely flats. Flats. I'm at that age, I've done my my heel thing, and you and said I'm okay. For it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. You've said so this all your time with the letter. Be kind to your knees and your and your uh, insteps early, so that you can wear heels longer. Okay, noted. Okay, <laughs> noted for sure. <laughs> and when it <laughs> when it I, I, I won't lie, I'm partial to, to heels. I just feel it just finishes off the outfit a bit differently, sure. but it affects posture. It, it 
heels are beautiful. I just can't wear them anymore. But actually, I probably would still be wearing them. But, you know, I had a car accident years ago, and oh, so it did affect yeah. my knees and my ability to wear heels. But I'm okay. I, I like a kitten heel, and that's why I do a lot of shoe shopping when I come to the U.K., because that's oh, the place okay. for the kitten heel. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. When it comes to holidays, are you beach relaxing, do nothing, or are you Dora the Explorer? I'm definitely relaxing. Relax. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Switch off, no device. Yes. Do not yes. I, I like so. I like quiet. I do like water if I can get to it. So I yeah. get a little bit of beaches in there for me. But yeah, I'm mm -hmm. definitely a veggie person. I'm gonna I'm gonna veg out. I'm gonna chillax. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. I might not come out of my pajamas ever. <laughs> no judgment. No judgment here. I can totally understand. No judgment. Sometimes you just need that kind of reset. And um, a woman that has all the demands on your plate, I can only imagine that is <laughs> totally necessary. <laughs> Fantastic. So. Yeah, I was okay. So I just want to kick off with the first question. And, um, you know, you've always been super transparent. That's one of the things I think was made your ministry just so relatable and just, you know, offers so much value to, to just people, not only just women, but, people, you know, us all in general. You've been super transparent in particular about your single life and, you know, both society and, you know, church culture as well, if you want to be totally sincere, can put a lot of pressure on women in particular about getting married. Um, how have you learned to be content within your journey? I think that it's a decision to make peace with yourself because uh, mm -hmm. God's not rushing just because you're miserable. So. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I, I, somewhere along the way, I think between my collision with the mm -hmm. word of God and just reality, I came to a place of saying, you know what, this is no longer serving me to be upset about being single. What mm -hmm. else is there to life? And yeah. the minute I said that, along with issuing a challenge to God that, you know what, I don't want to get married till you can prove to me I can be happy with just you because it would be very hypocritical for me to tell other ladies that Jesus is enough if I don't feel that way. Um, and yeah. God loves a good challenge. So the minute I said that, we were off on an adventure. And I have to say that somewhere, I don't even know if I realized when I got happy. I just got mm -hmm. happy. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I realized was that when I got happy, the choice of men that I allowed into my space changed. Um, my life choices changed. And I became a more fulfilled person because my happiness was no longer based on one person being in my life. Mm -hmm. So I think when you finally realize those things, and, and I, I'm going to honestly say that perhaps it's a maturity piece as well, um, that uh, after you get sick and tired, being sick and tired, you decide to change your mindset. Okay, this is where I live. Right. This address isn't changing anytime soon that i know of so how can i make this house pretty yeah mm -hmm. so you've been really intentional about just absolutely living living life to its absolute fullest yeah i mean I, I got to the place where i i guess i was really desperate to just be living out my purpose god what mm -hmm. am i here for it's got to be for more than marriage even yeah. for the married people Mm -hmm. um, and so once I got busy, after a while, I didn't have time for a, a while to date. And I just mm -hmm. realized time just went by, and I realized, oh, I'm happy. What happened? No man making me upset. But also, it was like, oh, I'm actually happy, and it's not relying on that. And there was so much going going on. I think my first book had come out and I was being invited yeah. to speak everywhere and life was exciting. And I realized that it was more about purpose than the person, the hole in our mm. hearts. Oh no, that's that's amazing. No, that's great to hear. I think, you know, definitely the conversations, especially sometimes with with church culture as well, where sometimes where you hope that would be almost a bit of a safe haven. It could sometimes can be a bit of a pressure a, a pressure a pressure pot in itself. So, well, I, I listen because to... The church doesn't know what to do with single people. They've never taken advantage of single people the way they should. You mm. know, they have more time. 
They have, you know, all these wonderful things going on that could be great contributors to the church, um, but they've geared up for a family church. And so they don't know what to do with singles and they don't know what to do with young people. And that has to change, you know, um, because singles are very valuable to society. I mean, here we have Paul who wrote half of the New mm. Testament, yeah. who was single and yeah. recommended that you stay single so that you could be about God's business and not worried about pleasing your mate. I mean, he said that was his opinion. That's not God. He clarified yeah. that. But, I mean, True. he had a point, you know, because to be perfectly honest, in my world, I don't know where that person would fit. A lot's going on, and I don't know if I'm willing to let go of any of the things that are going on. Mm. Not no, I think that's, that's that's completely fair. And I think, you know, you knowing that and owning that, mm-hmm. I can definitely see has definitely contributed to the thriving life that you're, you know, that you're that you're living, which kind of really like leads me to my next question about, you know, with the, 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 the theme for the for the convention this year is thrive. Mm-hmm. So with that in mind, how do you define like the thriving mindset? Well, a thriving mindset is when you're no longer in survival mode. Mm. Um, it, it's the wealthy life. And I always uh, compare wealth to riches by saying, you know, riches can come and go, but the wealthy life is a life that's well lived. Mm. Um, mm. It, it, you've got rich memories, rich relationships, rich experiences that fill you and fulfill you. And that is thriving. Uh, when you've gotten, you've hit that joy spot, you've got peace and you've got joy. That's actually an aspect of kingdom living, I would have to say, that thriving is an aspect of kingdom living. It's, it's mm-hmm. being in alignment with God, which brings peace, which leads to joy. And joy, of course, gives us strength. So there's a chain mm-hmm. reaction. There's a domino effect happening when we kick into that kingdom mindset space and actually choose thriving over surviving. Yeah, no, I like that. I think that's, I can see so much value, you know, in that it not being, you just, just surviving because we all know we're not at our full best when you're kind of like in a desperate mode. So definitely, you know, thank you so much for, for that, Dr. Michelle. And um, again, because where you've, you've, you know, you've been ministering to women for so, so many years, and I'm sure you definitely see is in like, why would you say it's important for women, especially intergenerationally, um, to gather together, you know, at the convention this month? Or just kind of like coming together mm-hmm. in general? Well, first of all, there's strength in numbers. Um, mm-hmm. There's safety in numbers. Um, and I, I pray, you know, that the conference is, is a safe place where women can be transparent and authentic without judgment. Um, and that we handle those issues with grace and love. Um, But I think that women need that place to be able to unload, um, to see other women dealing with the same issues they're dealing with, some triumphantly, some still trying to figure it out, Um, so that you get to the place where you understand it's process, whatever you're dealing with. Um, And there's reassurance in that, that people have been through and come out on the other side. You get to hear those stories. Um, and and that's a rich that's a rich gathering, you know, mm. of all ages, um, sizes, colors. <laughs> we're we're a wonderful diverse bunch. But True. We've got, we've got you know several things in common, and that is the need for love, the need for significance, the need to grow, um, and the need to know God intimately and passionately, so that He answers those deep places in our heart, um, and we don't rely on someone else to fill those spaces yeah no no that's i think that's so i think as you said there's just so much we can always learn from each other as well Mm -hmm. and i think like you know there's there's no person that hasn't got you know there's everyone's been through something from which we can look to glean from and whether you're younger or older in age i think there's like so so much valuing that yeah so um i want to try and take some questions from the audience and i think they've sent in the question so oh okay i've got one of the questions coming from Teresa, dr michelle i'll read it out and basically it says from what age did you start singing singing oh i started singing hmm, that was probably about 10 or 11. of course i did not know at the time i could sing um it was just something i like to do my mother had a beautiful voice yeah. 
And I remember yeah. specifically that we were at church and a woman that used to stand next to us would never sing. And I said to my mom, isn't she weird? She never sings. And so the next Sunday when we came, it was almost like she overheard the conversation because she said, you know, you must think I'm odd because I never sing, but you have such a beautiful voice that I just stand here and listen. And so she sent us both off to an audition for Civic Opera Association, and we both got in the play, and that was my love affair with singing and theater, and that's where it all began at the age of... But do you still dabble, do you still dabble in the arts? I do. Much? I have a music ministry. I have a rock band. Oh, <laughs> Okay. We look forward to seeing that. <laughs> that yes. well, we have a project out on uh, iTunes right now. It's called Rock for the Rock. Michelle McKinney Ro has oh. relevance. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. We, we I like that. Rock for the music. Rock. Yeah. yeah. And we're oh, performing fantastic. at a bar this weekend. So, yeah, I'm very much still very into music. Oh. Oh, no, that's amazing. I think definitely the audience are kind of really getting into that. So again, if you have any questions for Dr. Michelle, there's a speech bubble, just literally just hit the bubble and then we'll be able to answer, answer your questions. Um, I do have one more question just to kind of like, uh, um, while those questions come through, is like, what would you say has been the biggest life lesson that has really shaped you the most over the years? Ooh, that's huge. Wow. Let me pick hone in on one. Uh, you know, I, I would have to say that I just wrote this book called When Shift Happens, Say Yes to Your Next. Mm. So I would have to say that uh, my biggest life lesson is that change isn't bad, that mm -hmm. it can t take you someplace greater than you dreamed if you choose to embrace it. I personally have been through lots of changes, had lots of different seasons in my life where it looked like, oh my gosh, am I going to make it through this? And then the magnificent ha happened on the other mm -hmm. side of it. So I now actually get excited when stuff horrible happens. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. ooh, something really good must be coming up. What's on the other side of this? So I am definitely a forgetting what's behind and pressing forward towards the mark kind of woman yeah. based on my experiences and that life lesson. Wow. And I guess like with all that you've achieved, with all that you've got going for yourself, what would you advise your younger self? Keep going. Keep going yeah. no matter what. And, and I've actually done that. Um, so I've probably been speaking to my younger self all along. I mean, I've, I've gone through a, a lot of things, you know, Sometimes when you look good on paper and people see you as successful, they don't know that the hardships that you've been through. They don't know that I lost my boyfriend to gunfire before guns was even an issue when I was 21, and I was devastated mm -hmm. by that. That's how I came to Christ. They would never know that I got hit by a car and was bedbound for a year and a half, and three surgeries later, they said I wouldn't be able to wear heels. Well, that mm -hmm. one they were true on, but going up and downstairs, I conquered that. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, um, that I've been through great financial loss and devastation, that, you know, I've, I've lost a parent, uh, I've lost a career, I've, I've been yeah. through that no man's land, I've been on the backside of the desert like Moses for a season of my life, and, you know, uh, so I've been through a lot, um, and I, that doesn't show because God's grace is sufficient mm. in those times to restore and renew and it's made me older and wiser and uh, more solid, I would say. Mm. No, that's so that's so so true. I've always I've learned over the years for myself sometimes just to kind of like the challenges, and I can only imagine like you know everything that you've you know even shared. It only just makes you more more seasoned as an individual, and therefore I think you just be more rememberable, and you just kind of leave a different kind of mark on on people. Yes. So and I your wounds become beauty marks. True, true indeed, <laughs> true indeed, yes. Yeah. We, you, you clearly are beautiful anyway, you don't you? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you. It's, yeah. it's great to have you. Um, let me just see any more questions coming through, guys. Don't be shy. We have the Dr. Michelle McKinney Hammond. <laughs> so, you know, you take the time to ask your questions. Um, Ask, ask your questions away. If I've got loads of questions, so ask I can definitely look away, to ask away. I, ask away my questions. Okay. So, 
I mean, there's no denying, you know, we can, we can, oh, okay, a bubble's come, someone doesn't want to ask my question. Okay, um, I'm going to tap into, this one's just come through. So this question is, that how, okay, how do you think Ruth's path, okay, Ruth's path to marriage by putting herself out there would play out into, in today's times? Well, how did she put, put herself out there? She didn't put herself out there with the motivation to find a man. She was out there taking care of her of her mother-in-law. She didn't go to the field looking for a man. I doubt if she had on any makeup or, or was trying to look cute, um, which is to me the, the principle in that story is that in the midst of her serving, God served her mm. by giving her someone who would take care of her and provide for her and secure her future. But it came from her having a heart of service first. Um, she said to Naomi, where you go, I will go, and your God will be my God. Uh, she was a Moabite. God had told the Israelites not to even pray for the Moabites. They were considered enemies. And that's why Naomi told her, don't come to Israel with me. I can't ensure your safety, and you definitely will not be getting married unless I have a baby and birth you a husband, and will you wait for that husband? I mean, you've got to know the background of that story, you know. And Ruth said, I don't care about any of that. I'm not, I'm not going for a husband. Orpha wanted a husband, so Orpha went back home. We never heard from Orpha again. So okay. if, if your sights are just about being married, we'll never hear from you again because there's more to life than that. God designed marriage to enable you to fulfill his assignment. So if the assignment is not first in your mind, the marriage is purposeless and probably won't work that well. Uh, how many women or men have gotten up and looked at each other and said, um, you don't make me happy anymore sure. because they're not in purpose. They're just in partner. Okay. So you've got to mm -hmm. know the difference. So Ruth goes and her whole mindset is about them surviving. Okay. Mm -hmm. They weren't even really thriving at the time. They were surviving. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And um, in the midst of her service, God chose to honor her. The fact that she would leave a safe homeland. And go someplace mm -hmm. where, because if you notice, one of the statements that Boaz says to the men who are working in the field is, don't bother her. Because they basically could have raped her and mishandled her, mm -hmm. and nobody would have said anything because she was considered worthless in their eyes. But because of her servant to Naomi, even the Israelites spoke well of her and said, oh, she's here taking care of her mother-in-law, which was the thing that endeared uh, her to Boaz um, along the way. The fact that she, you know, submitted herself and was able to be authentic and transparent about what she needed from him. So she didn't really put herself out there. Naomi then advises her to go and lay at her at his feet. And he yeah. wakes up and she says, I need a redeemer. That's mm -hmm. what she said. Yes. Um, and so when we say, I need a redeemer, God comes through for us, whether physically or spiritually. He also comes through for us as a Boaz. So um, when we talk about, you know, I know there's some teachers out there, well, child, just put yourself up. No, don't do that. Don't do that. You're setting yourself up for heartbreak and for ending up with the wrong person when you put yourself out there. I think if there was a time where there is like, I dare say, so much noise when it comes to this topic, mm -hmm. I feel like if you're if you ever needed to be discerning, oh, it is it is now because yeah. you know there you you would encounter people who are very good at speaking Christianese, yeah. and if your if your spirit isn't, woo, you you will really find yourself in a very a very dark space. And I love what you say in terms of like her heart of service and really being you know being purposeful and be really kind of like taking care of her mother-in-law, which is a dynamic we don't, you know, his, you know, typically we, we always hear that mother-in-laws are yeah. a special kind. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it, was so, her, it was in the midst of serving that she was served. Yeah. And I think that uh, when we stop looking for what we want and, and, and mm. you know, we're so self-focused, uh, you know, de desperation diminishes discernment. Be about mm. your father's business. And he knows when the right person is in the right place at the right time and he will mm. present you to that person i think that's a very that was a grenade that you just dropped there that desperation say that again that desperation, desperation basically just diminishes, diminishes. i mean yes i think that's, and, and 
And that can apply in so many different capacities, even yeah. like when seeking out for a job, if we get too desperate just to secure anything, we might miss that actually it's an incredibly toxic environment. So mm -hmm. desperation diminishes your discernment. So yeah. I think that's already, that's quite, well, for me, that was quite the germ, quite a grenade, in fact. So thank you. No, that's just so 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 valid in you in, in you saying that. And then when I just it has me just reflect on, you know, the really challenging times in which that we've passed. You know, we can quickly forget it was only just three years ago with the pandemic and everything, mm -hmm. and with the state of the economic market and everything. So I guess when you think about trying to strive and be purposeful during difficult times, how how can you just really anchor yourself? in such a way that you don't find yourself kind of just being tossed around and everything? Well, for me, it really is about uh, siphoning, siphoning out a lot of voices. Mm. I really, I, I cannot tell you how passionate I am about this right now, about us returning to the basics of the word. We mm. have gotten developed the worst case of itching ears, running around, listening to all these flowery speeches, and stuff that tickles the emotions in the flesh, but is not necessarily theologically sound. And it's getting the church in trouble. It's getting us in trouble. This is the days of Timothy, where it says that the women were running around listening to everybody, um, uh, and listening to all the teaching, but they weren't learning anything. And so what was happening? The, the, bad, the bad kinds of guys were sneaking into the homes of foolish women who were laden down with desires and sin. Because when you're labeled down, when you're ladled down with, with uh, guilt because you keep slipping and dipping, you start to compromise more and more and more. It gets harder mm -hmm. to get back to the center of God's heart and his will for your life. Or you're just listening to all the wrong information and you're not grounded in the word. Um, and you're listening to things that sound good but aren't necessarily good for you. Mm -hmm. um, these things uh, get you in big trouble. So you really have to focus, get back into the word, get back into practicing hearing the voice of God, you know, listening to the Holy Spirit, because, you know, the Holy Spirit is talking all the time. Mm -hmm. Are we listening and are we obeying the instructions of the Holy Spirit is a whole other conversation. So mm -hmm. it's very, very mm -hmm. important to get back to that place of soundness in God knowing what he said, trusting his intentions towards you, and making him your first love. Mm. You know, everything that presents itself to you. You know, I asked God one day, because I was looking at that scripture about God cannot be tempted. I said, well, why aren't you tempted? He said, because everything that I possess or, or desire is already within me. Mm. So if God dwells in us, actually everything that we desire is already inside of us. We just have to tap into it. You know, uh, joy is already there. Peace is already there. Fulfillment is already there. You know, and anything else that assaults us from the outside is passing. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, this temptation came into my life. Guess what? It's not going to stand there, like, you know, for the next month. It's, it's presenting itself to you, and you get to choose to master your flesh, master your spirit, right? And say no. Just say no. Yes. Say no, no, thank you. <laughs> no, no, thank you. So. No, I, and as you say, it's really tapping into that power that we have within us. When we receive Christ, we receive the power that come, you know, that He had. That we we also have it within us. So it's about exercising that. So, exactly. no, thank you so much. Ah. Oh. It has been indeed a pleasure and an honor having you on tonight, um, Dr. Michelle. Any closing words? Because we're now just seven days away from the convention. I and I'm wait. sure. It's been a while since I've been there. And I love Pastor Yemisi so much. I can't wait to see her and hug her neck and, and just see the lady. I'm sure she's looking forward <laughs> to receiving you as well. So, <laughs> but any closing great words? get together i love the conversations i love the heart um you know we we're fierce we're we're fierce and we love hard and we're passionate mm -hmm. and i love those things about us as sisters and so i love being in an atmosphere to see that to see the exchange and, and to feel all of that so i'm really looking forward to it so i hope everybody's registered and 
and I'll see you there soon. Oh, thank you so much. On behalf of Pasi Embassy again, I thank you for joining us this evening. Yep. It's been indeed an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. So uh, well, let's just show, uh, let's just show, oh, I'm confusing the names. Let's just show Dr. Michelle much love. Thank you for, for <laughs> and we'll definitely see you live in the flesh next week. So yes. thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, All right. Ciao, really. Thank you. Thank you again, Take Dr. Care. Michelle. Take care. Thank you. God bless. God bless Bye. you. Bye bye. Ooh. Well, everyone, I mean, I hope you were really blessed by that conversation tonight. We've had two great phenomenal women of God, Pastor Helen Yours and, and Dr. Michelle McKenney Hammond. It's been great having them on tonight. And I'm sure this is just like a taster, almost just like um, the, the you know, little single of what the full album of the convention will be become next week. So we are now seven days away. So let the countdown begin. All roads next Thursday, the 23rd of November, all roads lead to Press City, kicking off in the evening service from 6.30 p.m. So um, please be mindful of that. All the details, um, the convention is free. But in the spirit of being able to host you well, and um, we would love for you to register. So we've got a good idea of how many, how many women will be coming. Past the embassy and the team really want to make sure we're able to host you in excellence. So please do go to the website and to be able to register so we know that you are coming. The sessions will include a whole range of things. So it will cover business and career, health and well-being, family matters, image consulting. And there will also be some really fun interactive activities as well to take place and a great time just to really commune and come together and not forgetting that sunday night will be um, there will be a night of celebration featuring some great gospel artists who will be there to celebrate and just close out the convention this is year 26 as i said at the beginning of the live been established since 1998 so you know we really want we each year with each theme we'll always wanting to ensure that it blesses the people so again thank you so much for joining me this evening the live will be saved so if you didn't get a chance to follow it all or share it with those who weren't able to join they can still tap in and you know be able to to you know enjoy with the, this, this nice conversation and i hope you truly all been blessed so god bless you take care and until next week thank you